Welcome to Rust Admin Academy. My name is Rob, and I'm here to teach you everything that you've ever wanted to know about owning and operating your own Rust server. Okay guys, let's get right into it. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I hope you learned something. If you like this video or learned something from this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up for me. And if you wanna see future content from me, make sure you subscribe and turn on notification bells. If you're a returning visitor to the channel, Welcome back. Obviously you learned something in the last video you watched. Hopefully you'll learn something today as well. So apparently I have uh, buried how to update your server uh, inside of another video and maybe I didn't give it enough attention and that's okay. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna teach you guys exactly how to update your server and get it back up and running and everything good to go. So we're gonna learn how to wipe the map I'm also gonna teach you how to wipe the blueprints and that's totally optional. It's not something that you have to do every time you wipe your server. Okay, so let's jump right into the server and see what we can learn. Okay, so let's say Face Punch releases a patch for the game and uh, they've released it on all the platforms. You can see it on Twitter, you can see it on the Face Punch website, you can see it everywhere. But if they release a patch and you need to update your server, this is what we're gonna learn about today. I've also been asked to explain how somebody can change their seeds uh, like the map seed of your server or even the size or maybe the player count or whatever. I'm going to show you all that stuff. So the first thing that we need to do is shut down our server. So right here, we can just type restart. If we just type restart, it'll automatically start a five minute countdown uh, to restarting the server. And you can change that too. So you can do like restart 60 seconds if you want, or you can do restart 10 seconds if you want, which is what we're gonna do in this case. There's nobody in the server right now, so this isn't gonna kick anybody out. This is just our test server, right? We'll just wait for that to close up. Now, I have an auto restarter uh, written into this batch code. Um, I can show you guys how to do that if you'd like to see. If you'd like to see that, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll show you how I did that. So I'm just gonna hard close this. Okay, so our server is shut down now. Let's have a look at our batch file. Okay, so in here, this is where we're gonna make the changes to our map. So let's say we want to change the seed. So right now we're set at server seed 15 and you can change that to whatever seed that you want. Uh, a helpful way to find out what seed you might wanna use. You can go to playrust.io and then you wanna click on map gallery. So in here, you can change these sliders at the top and this, will, this is basically a, a fine tuning of what seeds it's going to display for you so in this case it's displaying all seeds from 3k to 4k and it's doing the maximum number of monuments and the maximum number of caves but let's say we only want a seed that has like 25 monuments that's too many let's do something drastic so if we want a server that has just 11 monuments on it it will automatically populate which seed has just 11 monuments on it and let's see what happens if we scroll this back so I'm going to assume that this map actually has no caves on it. So that's why that's not having an effect. So let's move this back up. And let's say we only wanna have two caves. So now it has fine tuned our search criteria down to maps that only have two caves on them. So you can play around with that and you can decide what map seed that you wanna use. So for this example, I think we're using a 3K map. So let's just uh, scroll this down so that it's only showing us 3K maps. And right now we're using seed number 15, which is right here. But let's say that we wanna change it to seed number four, just for argument's sake. So this is the map that we're gonna use right here. And if you wanna see a blown up picture of it, you can do that too. So if you're happy with that, cool, let's go with that one. Okay, so let's go back to our batch file. So in our batch file, we're gonna change this to server seed number four, and we're gonna leave the server world size at 3K. Let's talk about that for a second. So if you have a brand new server and you're just starting out and you don't really have a strong population, let's say you have less than 25 players on your map, you don't need to go to a 4K map. You of course can if you want to, but you certainly don't have to. So you like, I would suggest with 25 players, Go to a 2500k map that way they're not spending hours upon hours traveling across the world trying to find whatever it is that they're trying to find but for our demo purposes we're going to leave it at a 3k map and on that note 
uh, 4K is default. So all of the official servers use a 4K map. So if you're looking for something that you're familiar with and you've been on official servers before, that's what you're looking for is a 4K map. And of course, server.max players, if we wanted to change that to, let's say, 102 players, we can make that change right here too. And anything else that you see in this batch file, your server description, your website, your uh, header image, whatever, uh, this is the time to change it when your server is offline, okay? So let's save that, and that's good for now. We'll come back to that later. So, Facepunch has released an update for our server. Okay, so let's, we need to get some addresses here. So we need the actual folder where our server is residing, okay? And that's this folder right here. So we're just gonna click on that address bar and we're gonna copy that or press Control C. And then we need to go to wherever we have Steam CMD installed and it might be different on, on your setup, it doesn't matter. Just find Steam CMD and load the executable steam cmd and then once you're loaded up here we want to log into steam so we're going to log in anonymous oops anonymous there we go and then we're going to tell it where we want to apply this new update okay so we're going to do force underscore install dir and then right here is where we're gonna do control V or paste in the address that we copied earlier. So this is where my server is. Yours might be in a different location. Just make sure you've copied it directly out of the folder so that you know that you're getting it right, okay? So now we've told Steam CMD where we want to install this update. Now we just need to actually do the update. So that is app underscore update 258550. And then we just hit enter. And now in my case, mine's already up to date and that's okay. Uh, in your, if, you need, if you need this latest update, it's actually gonna show a bunch of, it's gonna download all the files, it's gonna install all the files. And then once it's done, it's gonna say, success app is updated. And then once that's done, we can just quit. So now right now, if we were to boot up our server uh, by double clicking on, let's go back into that folder by double clicking on our, our on our startup batch file, which is right here, test server startup, it would load our server, but it would be completely vanilla. We wouldn't have any oxide and we wouldn't have any plugins. So let's go fix that. So we're just gonna jump into the Jugles here and we're gonna go to the UMOD website. So umod.org slash games slash rust. And then it'll tell you, once you're on this page, it's gonna tell you, the last time Oxide was updated. So in this case, this one was updated yesterday. That's all well and good. You always want to grab the latest version. Even if Face Punch didn't push out an update, sometimes Oxide will uh, push their own update and you're going to want to grab that one too. So it's helpful if you actually set up an account with the UMOD website. That way you get notified when stuff gets updated as long as you've subscribed to get notifications for that. Okay, so let's download. And depending on your security settings on your computer, this might actually ask you if you want to actually keep this file or discard it. Make sure you click on the arrow and click on keep. Otherwise, it'll just automatically delete it. So now we have our Oxide update. We're going to extract this and we're going to extract it right here. And this Rust dedicated data folder is what we want to move over into our server area right here. So. We're just gonna click on the file and we're gonna do control C, which is copy. And then we're gonna click on over to our folder where our server is. And we're just gonna click on control V, which is paste. It's gonna ask you, do you actually wanna replace these 30 files with the same names? And yes, of course we do. Now we have the latest version of Oxide installed and we can go ahead and start up our server. So just as we're seeing it pass by here during the boot up, uh, procedural map of 3k with the server seed of 4. That's how we know that our batch file, the changes that we made on our batch file actually took place and we know that we're getting the map that we picked. Sometimes you'll notice that when you're booting up your server it seems like it might be stalling out a little bit. That's okay, just be patient and let it, let it do its thing. Um, there are instances 
where people make mistakes. The people that are developing all this stuff, they are human, they can make mistakes. And sometimes Oxide is not done properly. Yesterday was a good example of that. They pushed out an update of Oxide. Turns out it totally borked the servers that anybody installed Oxide onto. And they were very quick about it. I think it took them about 14 minutes and they figured out the problem, fixed it, and they pushed out a new update. But while that, while we were running that broken version of Oxide, it would just, it would say starting server and it would never move past that point. You're going to run into that stuff. Uh, typically your server, I mean, depending on what kind of uh, equipment you're running your server on, your server should be up and running within five minutes. If it takes longer than five or 10 minutes, you know you have an issue and you need to investigate further. Okay, so as you can see, our server was successfully installed with Oxide. Uh, let's see, what can I show you on here that would prove to you that Oxide was successful? Well, earlier, oh, okay, so here's one right here. So here's one of the plugins that we've previously installed on here called Admin Radar. And here's another one saying Magic Loot. So we know that there's plugins on this server and they are functioning as we would expect them to. So that's how you update your server and reinstall Oxide. Just a point of note, anytime you run Steam CMD and you manually do that update, it is going to take Oxide out of your server. So it's going to put it back to a vanilla server. So yes, every time you update your server, you have to reinstall Oxide. It's not going to mess with anything. And as long as you haven't deleted any of your map saves or your blueprint saves, it's always going to go back to the way that it's supposed to. But you do always have to reinstall Oxide. It's just the nature of the beast. All right, so I'm going to quickly shut this server down because I forgot to show you guys something as I was doing it. Okay, so while your server is offline, let's say you want to wipe your map or you want to wipe your blueprints, uh, it's super easy to do. Just in the folder where you have your server hosted, you want to click on the server and you want to click on whatever you've named your server in your batch file. In this case, it's YouTube test server. And these files right here, so procedural map.3k and then the different seeds beside it, is showing us the different map saves that we have for this server okay so if we wanted to wipe the map but retain blueprints we can do that all we do is delete those files and as long as this player.blueprints is still here all of your players that were there previously will still have the same blueprints that they had before you deleted the map and then we can just go ahead and restart our server again and it will be a map wipe even though it wasn't forced by face punch and face punch only forces map wipes on the first thursday of every month so mark that on your calendar because it means that you have work to do if you're hosting a server you have work to do every first thursday of the month no matter what unless of course they push out some sort of a hot fix or an emergency patch that they have to run through but you can count on the fact that every first thursday of the month you are going to be working on your servers. Fair warning. Okay, so hopefully that clears up some of the questions as far as how to wipe your server or how to wipe your blueprints. Um, if you guys have any further questions, don't hesitate. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know that you guys still have more questions or something that I didn't cover thoroughly enough and I'll go back and do it over again. I have no issue doing that whatsoever. I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what to do and exactly what to expect as you're operating your servers. If you found this video helpful in the least bit, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And if you want to see more content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notification bells. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.